We'll go ahead and call this part two of the signal server GUI. Uh, I showed in the last video how to install it. Uh, this video, it's going to just kind of cover uh, once I get the new Dragon OS Focal out there, the signal server GUI will already be pre installed as well as Photon Map. So uh, I had to do a couple things though to make it distributable, um, mainly because the uh, some of the Python requirements uh, were conflicting with uh, Crocodile Hunter, which needed some older stuff. So I went ahead and did a, a virtual uh, Python environment for this setup. So this is again Dragon OS running uh, the new version I'm working on, uh, running actually from a USB stick on a laptop. And what I've done here is I've changed into the user source signal server underscore GUI directory. And let's see. So I got a virtual environment in here. And the way I had to do this because this is in the user source directory uh, owned by root. Uh, you can either ch own this whole directory to your user uh, that you make, uh, or uh, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to um, change the root, and then what we're going to do is to get set up here, we'll do a source vnv bin activate. You'll notice uh, over here on the left, we're now in this Python virtual environment that has the necessary um, uh, requirements for signal server GUI installed there so we're not uh, messing uh, with anything system wide. Alright so once that's going all we got to do is uh, Python 3-m signal server GUI that'll start up on port 8080 and take a look here and what I'll do is I'll run through again create a uh, station here and I just was uh, looking uh, well actually I added some additional uh, elevation data that comes a matter of fact it comes with by default with signal server uh, the actual signal server behind the scenes the, the engine that's uh, doing these uh, RF uh, propagation plots and uh, it's over in the London uh, area there, so we'll do, there was a tower, it's about 600 feet in the air. Uh, let's see, we'll do the BT Tower Station. I think it was 51, 52. And it was about 600 or 620 feet in the air. Uh, of course, it's not North America, but that's fine. Uh, I'll leave everything else as is. And we'll come over here to our plots section, create a new plot here. Uh, there can't be any uh, spaces in the plot name, so I'll put some underscores there. Come down here. Uh, I don't know what uh, specific frequencies are on this tower. Just make something up for now. 446. Uh, we'll do effective radiated power. We'll do 100 watts. Actually, that's the capacity do 100 watts here terrain code I'll leave default I'll leave pretty much everything default uh, except for what I want to show we should have uh, HD uh, SDF HD data for this particular area that's 3600 if you're going to do anything outside of the areas that I've shown in, a, in these two previous videos you're going to need to get the elevation data you're going to need to get that into the user source SDF directory and you also have to use uh, either the script I've shown in, in a video to convert that to uh, signal server for, uh, compatible elevation data uh, or you can manually use the tool that's in the user source uh, signal dash server directory anyways uh, propagation mode go with ITM We'll do just a generic dipole, and because this isn't a plot-to-plot, -plot, we just need one station. 
All right. Uh, come up here. We can see it's listed. If we click on files, it's going to take a little longer than normal to generate this because it it, it is uh, an HD plot and the elevation data I've um, supplied with Dragon OS it is uh, zipped up, so it's going to take a little longer. You can see behind the scenes here what it's doing, and when this finishes, we should have a nice uh, HD plot. And I'll go ahead and. Uh, we'll take a look at it both in Photon Map and uh, Google. So if we go to Change User Source Photon Map, and again this will be in the new Dragon OS, this will all be taken care of. We do Python 3-M and actually do HTTP server on this one. This will start up on port 8000. So if we do local host host 8000 we should get a photon map up you may have to change uh, I'll update cesium but uh, we'll change to world imagery because it doesn't uh, require a key and we'll let it load and we'll come back over here we see our plot is finished nice HD plot go to files Download the KMZ. Come over here to Photon Map. We'll do a file upload. Browse. We'll do, let's see, BT Tower Plot, the latest one. We'll give that a second to, um, to load. I'll also pull open. Google Maps, or sorry, Google Earth. This is loaded. All right, so this is in Photon Map here. You can now see there's some additional features here that uh, are accounting for the um, other files that are uh, that Signal Server GUI throws into uh, the plots. And so if it looks like this, there's probably not uh, elevation data out there for that to uh, do the modeling on. So we can change the opacity. that uh, continue to load all right so in Google Earth Open a project and we'll import KML or KMZ. Let that load. And what may have happened is the HD data doesn't cover out there. And we can then come down here. You can edit the name, lat long. Uh, let's see, you can.
well, I'm probably uh, not seeing it, but you should be able to change the opacity on here as well. But you can see pretty close to the real tower and the height there. And let's see if we come back over photon map. It's loaded. And of course, I recommend getting a key and getting better uh, map data. And then, let's see, if we create another another station here, we'll do, uh, let's see, create something, I think this is about, 15 miles away. Create a point to point, and we'll do point to point analysis. We'll just go with the same frequency. I just want to do uh, mainly show what this looks like. Uh, go with 100 again. We can leave it on a lower resolution. Radius is fine. Propagation mode, ITM. We'll do the dipole and we'll do the second location. We can see we've got our point to point. We can click files the first time, which will do a generation of the point-to-point -point analysis. Come here, we'll download our point-to-point -point KMZ. Now the point-to-point, -point, there's uh, some features in cesium that don't account uh, for the height above uh, ground. I um, can't recall which specific feature, but for now probably best to do the point-to-point. Um, -point. Uh, you can take a look at it in cesium. It will work. The uh, analysis though might not be snapped to the ground height though like it is in uh, Google Earth. So if we do import KML from computer and we'll do point-to-point. -point. And we can see here We got our point-to-point -point analysis. If we see, we got line of sight path between the two. It's all green. We'll let it load. We get our pop-out site-to-site analysis. Uh, we can see the both the transmitter and the receiver location, the distance between the two, the height. Um, any sort of receiver gain, uh, free space path loss. Of course, this is uh, just something I threw together. It would be best to pick some real towers and some real frequencies. And we can see how we can interact here. We can do the uh, plot, show the plot as well, and have that turned on. And I'll go figure there's the feature opacity. So now we have them both overlaid at the same time. We can see the tower height is up and then the shadowing underneath the line of sight uh, can be followed down uh, to see if there's any anything else uh, that may be physically in the way uh, that may show up on Google Towers and, and such. But yeah, so uh, that again will all be included in Dragon OS. There's a lot, uh, lot, a lot of power I think behind Signal Server GUI, and I encourage uh, trying it out and uh, doing some real, um, real analysis with it. And uh, again, though, you'll need the uh, elevation data to go along with this. So 
I, I put some in there to get going. And matter of fact, I'll show one more thing. If uh, if you want to just jump right into Signal Server GUI uh, really quick, you can do the following here. I'll just take a look at the README. Uh, this command here with a Python 3 on it will generate a, uh, a bunch of entries in the database. So we'll start the server back up. You'll see now there's uh, additional stations in here, uh, additional plots already available, pre-configured with different settings. You just got to take a look and see what frequencies are on, uh, what propagation model. Like we'll take a look at this one, dipole plot. We can create it. This is a line of sight, uh, so it kind of is the reverse here. Uh, Let's see, I'll just kind of show what this what this looks like. So this is uh, just looking at it from a line of sight perspective based on the information that was provided for that um, that uh, particular station so you can get up and running and try out uh, some of the sample test data that's in here and um, and yeah all right there you go